Hello and welcome to Di Deadline Dilemmas ahead of Game Week 36. I actually can't believe it's Game Week 36. It doesn't feel like that long ago we were doing like one, two, three. Yeah. Uh, now we're almost done. <laughs> almost done. It's it's that time of the year, right? Where if you're at a good rank, then you want the season to end. If you're at a bad rank, you want the season to end. And if you're having a middling season, you also want the season to end. Because, you know, so the only people who want it to go on is basically the guys in like, 11k to 18k who you know want that shot um but yeah i think if mostly everybody's ready for it to be uh for a nice little break i do always find it quite anticlimactic like game week 38 when it ends like if you've got a good rank or a bad rank it's just it goes quiet doesn't it no it does, no, it no one's talking about it anymore um you suddenly have this dopamine hit of the game week 38 everything happens together and then fall flat Right. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> if you have a bad season, you never log in for the next week. If you have a good season, you keep checking who, how, who did I beat? Who else did I beat this season? And yeah, that's that's typical game week 38. It's so true. It's so true. And also, I should comment just for people watching. So we're well. We're, first of all, we're recording straight after the Chelsea Spurs game, and yeah. second of all, we've got red arrows below. And I'm not trying to trying to flex here, but now we have small green arrows Praz is a little I'm bit a bigger green okay seven, seven uh, by seven points that's big that's big i mean i'm basically on the safety score it's ba mine's basically a green arrow up to thirty-five thousand. so talk about your team how what's what is your score and, and maybe let's do a little bit of how was your wild card and sort of any regrets and what were your what were your decision making or thinking yeah that sounds good sounds good i mean your wild card did, did better than mine uh let's put it let's put it that way but i think it was Gordon just Gordon got lucky and rich allison did that's based that's pretty much the difference between our teams isn't it i mean you've also kept two arsenal defenders yeah. um so i mean so my team was was pet Petrovic. Then I had Poro, Burn, and Cher. So I decided to go with two Newcastle defenders just because I'm sure we'll get to this. The defenders are really, really bad. And I didn't really realise ahead of the wildcard how bad they were. Maybe losing Gusto um, was you know, part of the reason because that he would have been a defender spot we'd have Even probably gone for. Like some people could yep. have gone double Spurs defence for the doggy. Yeah, although, yeah, I'm kind of glad we didn't, <laughs> didn't go double Spurs defence. But yeah, um, I then went Foden, Bruno Fernandes, who I squeezed in ahead of Gordon, um, which meant I had to sacrifice having a second Arsenal defender. Um, stats wise, I'm, I'm glad I went Bruno, but obviously points wise and the fact he might be injured, which I'm sure we get to, we can talk about not that. so great. Palmer captain and then Son. The the punt I went for was Richarlison. I, I was zooming in the ring because I couldn't quite squeeze Mazerson in without you know making a huge sacrifice. Brennan Johnson didn't really excite me. So, and I knew who I wanted. I wanted to get Richarlison. Like, it was almost 100%. I was looking at teams so I could get Richarlison. And a bit like, do you remember we both got Jota, didn't we, ahead of double game week yeah, 25? Yeah. I just kind of forced it in because I knew that's the guy I, I wanted to get. So, seven points down on Gordon. But there's part of me that's still quite glad that I, that I did it. Um, yeah. And I, I thought, worst case scenario, I thought he'd get 60 minutes. And he got, what, 90 minutes? I yeah, he got 90 minutes I mean, across the double. If someone would have told me that Richarlison is starting one of the two doubles, I would have definitely gone for Richarlison. I think that's that's a, that's a win in terms of minutes because I was fearing two benchings and the first game he plays is Liverpool. That's why I left it and I've got enough money to go Gordon to Richarlison later. But we'll talk about my team, but I think it was yeah. a completely fair shout. Yeah, I mean, what, what really pushed me was Paul O'Keefe, the Spurs, yeah, Spurs journalist. He predicted he would start against Arsenal. I wasn't fully confident. I'm not saying I know more than him, but just the fact he thought he would, you know, it was a possibility. Yeah, he's close. Yeah, that, that he was closer than when we, you know, I mean, I held him a lot longer than you last time. But before the wild card, you know, he was clearly not fit and getting tiny minutes. Um, and then it was Jackson. I, mean, I blame him. I blame him. Sorry to interrupt. That's uh, right. for, for the whole chip strategy thing. Because um, you remember he got injured, and that was one reason why I moved from not free, sorry, free hit, not free hitting in game week 29 to free hitting because that was one additional hit I would have had to take, and that tipped the balance. <laughs> and obviously, I'm not saying it was a wrong decision, but I just think the outcome and the free hit variance in in game week 34 was just so huge. That I do partially blame Richarlison for the whole thing. I was, see, I was, and, and Wang. I was actually, and Wang, yeah, of course, don't forget Wang. But I, yeah, I was actually thinking about your team probably while you were climbing a mountain the other day, because <laughs> I was quite set that I was going to go down the strategy I've gone down like uh, earlier than you. You were quite yeah. set actually the other way. Yeah. So yeah, I think it was your double, your Villa defenders kept getting injured as well. So yes, yes. 
it, yeah. there is a combination of things and then at some point we convinced ourselves that there could be one upset which happened later in the next round it didn't happen <laughs> in the round we wanted it um, you know small things like man united losing to nottingham forest changes the whole season chip strategy and then you know outcomes but that's for end of season sort of licking our wounds i think for now um, yeah i think i think your team team is in in good shape because i think a lot of people will want richarlison as the third spurs going forward yeah, I mean, it basically is the template with just squeezing Richarlison in. Um, and I don't have the two Arsenal defenders, which, to be honest, I'm pr- pretty gutted about. Um, and it was, yeah, it was the first week I hadn't had Saka since. I was, I was scrolling back through last season. I actually can't remember when I didn't last own Saka. He's literally the player who'd been in every week. Did you not sell him before game week nine wildcard? Game week 10 wildcard? No, I've kept him the, oh, ho- the whole season. I've kept Saka. Um, there, was a ga- there was a game he missed out on. Um, I actually almost sold him after a few game weeks but I think I think me you and Seb did a pod and we were talking about everyone was trying to get Son yes. <laughs> um, and yes. I think and I was I talked did. out of it I saw Bruno for Son that was it that was I it yeah that pod. yeah it feels, <laughs> feels like just just a couple of months ago but it's been a whole season man um, that's, yeah that's what that's why I actually, actually honestly it doesn't feel like we've done 30 however many shows yeah. um already um but yeah so that, that's my team but oh and okay. I sh- I'll say the bench so well uh, Jackson, Isak, Harland, obviously, and then Gabriel and Maguire. So I did. I mean, Gabriel is such value. I didn't. I've kept a bit of money in the bank as well, so that I could go for Ben White if I want to. Uh, mm. But we'll get to transfers and stuff later, I guess. Okay. Okay. So that was a total of what uh, seventy-four so points. I'm on. Yeah. If bonus are right, because the game has literally just ended. Yeah, seventy-four points. So it's a 74. it's a grey okay. green arrow. Okay, so my team, um, I'll talk about my wildcard. Yep. So, by the way, my first issue was, as some of some people know, I was hiking over the weekend. And I a had to lock hike. my team. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and it was basically I had to lock my team the night before because I had no certainty of what network I will get, when, even if I'm at the foothills, right? So I, in, in fact, did get network, and I managed to download down to Maguire because it hit me as I started the trek that how am I going to get Richarlison? It's going to be Gordon to Richarlison and Richarlison is more expensive. So uh, instead of 0. 0.0 in the ma- million in the bank, I left, uh, you know, 1 million in the bank. Uh, so I, I did go Petrovic and, and Ed- Edison like yourself and then Maguire, Poro, Cher, White and Gabriel. Um, that was my defense. The idea was that I'd play Maguire this week over like a another Spurs defender, which because I didn't expect Spurs to keep a clean sheet, which turned out to be a, a, a decent assumption. Mm-hmm. I did not assume Romero would score, but it is what it is. Um, then I think the midfield five is P- Palmer, Gordon, Son, Bruno, Foden. Got lucky with Foden missing out, so Haaland's goal came in um, as as the five, and then Isaac, John, uh, Jackson, and uh, Haaland is like the template front line, right? So. Not nothing too, you know, too hi-fi. I mean, I I was looking at Richarlison as I said instead of Gordon or instead of Bruno, but in the end, actually, you know, both outscored him, so it was fine. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's that's the team. A little bit, I feel a little bit unlucky that both Sharon and Edison, which who you have as well, yeah, might have niggles. So when we come to our bus teams, we'll talk about them. Yeah, I, I was quite excited to see because I knew you were up the mountain. And I know we've had very similar team a lot of the time. So I was quite, and we hadn't spoken for a while, like done, yeah, done one yeah. of these. So I was yeah. quite excited. I'm, I'm a bit nervous if we had like exactly the same team. <laughs> so I'm quite, I'm quite glad you did it. You, you didn't go for a Charleston yet. Just so, um, you know, just so there's some differentiation, but I mean, that was literally it. So you've got what, uh, White and you've got White and Gordon and I've got Richarlison and Cher, I guess. White and Burn. White and Burn. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. I think you did have more money than me. I'm pretty confident. I did, of that. which is why yeah. the Dalo version had 0.0 in the bank, and I like it, you know, because I have a good team value. So I was like, no one's going to be able to afford this. But clearly, you know, money doesn't buy points. So, um, you know, it is what it is. So, but 81 points, um, you know, almost a 20% green arrow if the bonuses hold. I'm really hoping the Petrovic bonus holds because keepers have been a real bummer this year. So getting 11 points from a keeper feels very good. Um, and double Arsenal defense feels all right as well. Um, I think next week and game week thirty-eight, they're they're good picks. So uh, so feels okay. But I think at thirty-nine k where I'm now, I I don't see I don't see a unless there's some m- extreme mega variance in some captaincy. Like in game week thirty-seven, if I'm still around thirty-ish k, I'm not captaining Haaland. I'm just gonna go for it. It's like some. I think you'd have to. Out. 
um and so we'll see we'll see if it works out well that's the interesting thing because i was trying to look at i mean that just outside of captain you know wh where can we go that other people can't and i think the first one obviously for charleston i need to stop mentioning him the other one was i had a lot of de bruyne de bruyne drafts right. um i had an awful lot of them but obviously my team value is really really bad um i ju yeah i just decided to go for charleston in instead but i think he's going to become slightly more popular because you know you obviously think de bruyne I think he's going to, although a lot but of that depends on Edison. Though. It depends yeah. on Edison, really, doesn't it? Because Edison yeah. to Ortega probably enabled Fernandez De Bruyne for a few people. Maybe they need a little bit more money. Then that's four, four City, right? If you go Ortega. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you'd have to go. Yeah. And there's not many goalies around, are there? Because like, Anana's expensive. Vicari is yeah. expensive. Correct. Yeah, there's a lot of expensive players. Maybe people won't be able to get to De Bruyne then. But I was just thinking but, in wildcard, if I'd gone De Bruyne, I felt like people just weren't going to go there and you get yeah. then three weeks of De Bruyne. Yeah, um, Lee did that and he he went instead of Bruno, who I understand. But I just think yeah. if you're going De Bruyne, you will sacrifice one of the five midfielders that I have, Palmer, Gordon, Son, Bruno and Foden. And I don't think De Bruyne is that much better than any one of them. I actually, no, I do agree with that. And that's probably why I ended up not going for it. I do, it's just the fact you can go for someone that other people can't. Yeah, and yeah, if yeah. you get that freakish run, like you know what De Bruyne did in game week thirty-seven, was it two seasons ago now? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if something oh, oh, oh. freaky happens like that, you're you know you're going to absolutely fly. But and then I started thinking you could just get that with Charleston potentially. You could, you could. Basically, we're talking about a Mateta event, right? That yes, you, you get a <laughs> which we didn't expect from. Game. Yeah, yeah, and you maybe even captain him, and that's basically gets you that nitro boost. I think you and I would never do something like that at early season, but depending on your goals, your end of yep. season goals, like for me, it doesn't matter if it's 45k versus 20k. At that point, you can sort of throw the last dice and, and go for certain players that are suboptimal or maybe not the best captain, because that's, that's, that's where you have to sort of risk it. The only thing that might stop me without going on too much of a tangent is I've got a couple of mini league rivals who don't play that seriously. And um, I mean, one of them, he was about 150 points behind me a lot longer ago. And then he WhatsApp me like, are you getting scared yet? And I looked and he's like, honestly, he's about six points behind me. So really? wow. <laughs> yes, I mean, again, it's for you know, free hit 34. Um, it's, it's yeah. hard to compete with, um, but stop the rot now, small green. So three weeks it's to go. Good exactly all right let's go to rob t yes yes so actually this was quite scary as, as a wild carder and might be quite you know people who haven't wild carded might find it quite exciting because i mean the top teams are you know they're in order city 3.3 goals arsenal three and liverpool 2.75 liverpool probably much less owned because of the salah leak at the weekend which we can probably be quite grateful for now yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> um so yeah, I mean the thing is not a lot of people own. I think that's where you're going. Not a lot of yeah. people own these Arsenal and Liverpool attackers. Um and who do they own? They own Chelsea. So where's Chelsea? So Chelsea two point two. Yeah. Chelsea's okay. I mean, I've got no desire to bench Jackson, for example. Not just because he scored today, but I mean that's a that's a good fixture. I'm terrified of Arsenal though. Like, absolutely terrified. And I guess most of us have got Haaland and Foden. Uh, yes, and and so people with a De Bruyne, I think they have the edge. Um, if yep. all three start, of course, and we think Foden's going to start. He was pictured in training today, um, but yeah, Arsenal attacker is the advantage. Like I, I saw a lot of people asking, you know, what should they do if they're free hitting in game week thirty seven? Load up on Arsenal because hmm. they they don't have the double, but they have good fixtures either side of thirty seven. So. Yeah, if you have an Arsenal attacker, great. Um, another win for people who haven't wildcarded. Um, you know, people like Andy Moore, I think they have Saka, right? Um, and, and a few others who yeah. wildcarded some time back. Yeah, Mode's got, he's, he's still got Saka. So, I mean, that's one player, you know, I look at his team and I, yeah, I am jealous. Uh, there's not many people with three, though. I think a lot of people who free hit in 34, maybe I'm generalizing too much here, didn't have two Arsenal defenders. Yep. So, and maybe they don't want to bring one in because they they don't you know they don't double next week but i mean if i was looking at replacing share this week for example i'd probably look at white or saliba before yeah. quite a lot of other defenders which actually did you know it did surprise me but the fixtures are just too good and the arsenal are just too good it annoys me because we talked about you i mean you've kept two defenders but we've talked about yeah. this the whole season well almost after maybe the first 10 weeks 
Correct. Correct. And I now, mean, yeah, we've pretty much been on double defense for thirty weeks, maybe. Yeah. Um, so and and even Saka. So t- t- triple triple Arsenal's been a theme. Although Havertz broken that mold a little bit. A lot of people went for him on the free hit, and maybe that's the shout they they go for as their their last game week thirty eight punt. He um, might come in useful because of price as well. Because I was looking when I was thinking maybe I'd need to sell Addison and stuff. Money in thirty eight didn't become a problem. If exactly. it does become a problem, Bruno. Re- Bruno Fernandez replacement. You can just go have it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that will be popular. But coming back to this week, yeah. so I think the top five scoring teams. So Chelsea is decent. I think um, Forest away to Sheffield United. So people are talking about Chris Wood again as as being an option. Although Au- Auni is back in training, uh, but I think Wood will start the next three. And then Newcastle. Newcastle have been good away from home, not so much. But even here, even the market still think that they're good. They're good for a couple of goals against Burnley. I find the Everton clean sheet odds quite interesting as well, just separate to that. Because, I mean, obviously Everton have crept a load of clean sheets recently. They've got, yeah. they haven't got a double in 37, but I think they've got Sheffield United. So they play Luton and Sheffield United. And then it's Arsenal in 38, so you wouldn't play them then. But I think you'd be playing your Spurs or Arsenal defenders in, in 38. But I've seen people talk about bringing in like a, you know, a Tarkowski or Branthwaite this week. But I mean, clean sheet odds, it doesn't look great. And no. the fact they're both projected to score 1.5 goals as well, Looks like it's a Friday night game. It could be an absolute. I don't. I don't know what the word is without swearing. But... Games are very hard to predict anyway, right? You don't know which I mean, match it turns up. But at home, they're they're a decent outfit. So I do. I wouldn't. I mean, Everton are now safe, right? And when that happens, you don't know, right? They could be partying <clears> until last night and then show up for a Friday game because they're safe. So you never know. Um, it could be Luton's time. It could be. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's all priced in with the odds as well. Because I, I was a little bit surprised there. I thought um, Everton would have a better. Still, I know you said Luton are good at home, um, and they are, but I just thought Everton would have slightly better clean sheet odds there. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I mean, uh, Spurs at 1.4 expected goals are actually lower than Man United, um, Newcastle, Chelsea. So when we talk about benching dilemmas, I think there's a little one there in terms of Son versus others. Poro as well for teams like myself, because obviously Madison didn't play today. Bench, right? It probably is, but when Madison didn't start today, I started thinking, oh, maybe, maybe probably because he'd then be on set pieces, is he more yeah, of an yeah. option? But I mean, he's not going to get 90 minutes of set pieces. I think that's pretty clear. He was close today as well, that Romero chance that he, Yes, uh, Romero that he should have scored. And Richarlison was behind Romero as well. So yes, that's, what, that's what I was looking at. <laughs> I, was well. I was rooting for a Richarlison goal, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, let's, let's move on. So I think in, in attack, we talked about the teams. In defense, it's just so hard this year to predict anything other than an Arsenal clean sheet. I think the the highest odds are Man City. So if Edison is fit or people with Guardiola, um, I think that that looks good as well. This is where I, I debate the De Bruyne versus... I mean, does De Bruyne have 55% assist? Actually, he probably does in this week. But normally, 55% odds of clean sheet are huge. So you want to take one slice of that pie as well. Um, so Man City and Arsenal defenders, I'm... I'm I'm glad I have three of them this week if Edison is fit. But it looks like, I mean, he's trained two days in a row. So I saw there was some speculation from, there was a journalist, I think his name was Tyrone. I can't remember his surname. He speculated that they're not going to rush Edison back because Ortega's been good. But I don't know what that was based on. Edison's yeah. trained two days in a row. They're going for the title. I, I don't see why they wouldn't play Edison. Um <laughs> I mean, Plus the goalkeeper is the easiest position. You just play him. If he doesn't yeah. play, then then you get an auto sub. Well, yeah. So no risk of cameos. But yeah, I think you summed it up well as well with City and Arsenal. I mean, I'm jealous, you know, of double Arsenal, to people with double Arsenal defence. You know, I really am. I mean, we've seen bigger clean sheet odds than this wiped out. But but yeah, yeah. you still want to play them. You still want to play exactly. them. <laughs> exactly. You get 40% odds plus over three games. That's basically you're saying, you know, you're good for 1.2. So you could get one between one and two clean sheets are expected between yep. in the next three games. I feel like, though, it is quite low for Arsenal at home. And I guess maybe that's... Ref- I mean, Bournemouth have been pretty good, re- rec- have been good recently. Because yeah. um, we've seen Arsenal at home go over 50 before. I think against Luton, they pushed 60%. Um, yeah. But, I mean, it's, st- it's still a monster and clean sheet odds. It, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember that vividly. I, mem- I was sat there thinking, this is the easiest clean sheet ever. It was an we evening are- game, right? I always yeah, it was. Games, it was. I can sit peacefully and watch it after the time <laughs> I get to bed. So I remember all the evening games. I think, yeah, I think it was a Tuesday night. I feel like it was a Tuesday yeah. night or something because there was no podcast like after, but yeah, it wasn't over the moon. Um, yeah, so that's this week. So should we get on to, 
on to let's our, go to our, next our, week. Our so we should, d- dilemmas. We should, yeah. Let's do yours first. Okay. Uh, well, so, so in this image, I've got Petrovic starting, but that was when this whole quote of Edison won't be ready. <laughs> but I'll obviously start Edison in goal. Um, I will play Gabriel in white uh, and then play share. I mean, even if Eddie Howe says he's out, I'm still going to play share because Eddie Howe lies. Um, yep. So um, we'll see. If if Cher doesn't play, then Maguire will come out. If Cher is out long term or if there's some other issue, then we will see. I don't know what I'll do then. Maybe I may still just hold the transfer and then wait for two you know, two free transfers leading up to um, a game week th- uh, 37 bench boost. Um, then midfield, I think this is where the dilemma is because Palmer is fine. Foden is fine. Between Bruno, Gordon and Son, I need to bench one. And at the moment, I'm benching Gordon simply because of the new Newca- the, the Newcastle away thing, you know, <laughs> and Gordon away thing. But my gut says Burnley away, Newcastle are actually a little bit coming back in form. Is it the right one? You know, if you look at expected goals, Man United are expected to score le- fewer number of goals than than even Newcastle. Uh, you know, Son again today was completely anonymous. Actually, yep. the whole Spurs team was. Would they be tired playing Liverpool? Would Liverpool be rejuvenated? All, I mean, all these are narratives now, but it's still on paper a tough game. Um, so should I bench Son instead of Gordon TBD? Uh, I haven't yet made up my mind. I'll listen to a p- few press conferences and we'll see where we land. Uh, and then Haaland captain Isak and Jackson. So I think that's pretty nailed unless we hear anything else about Haaland. What you, so if Cher was ruled out, for, I know the, Eddie Howe lies, so this is very niche, but let's say he was quite a big doubt for this weekend, but it looked likely he was going to be back for 37. Then I'm I guessing you just play, play Maguire. Maguire. Yeah. So the only way I'd think about a transfer this week would be Cher is out for the season or something. Like he, that's that's what they say, that he's out for the season. Even then, I might wait because I'd rather have a Trippier um, in that position, if Trippier can make it. So that's the only other defender that tempts me. So I might as well wait for him to be ready, or at least for me to know if he's ready or not by game week 37. So... Because otherwise, there's no other defender who I really want here. Um, you know, so... I mean, talking of... We were talking about players that people can't get to. You know, if Cher was injured, that Antipia was fit in 37, that would be an absolute blessing. Absolutely. No-brainer. Because then I'd yeah. go Bruno to Richarlison and Cher to Trippier. Those would be my moves. And that's absolutely perfect. And then you're getting in two players that people might struggle to get one of. Exactly. We say people... I mean, people can always find a way, but hits become a lot harder at the end of the season because there's less less time to, to pay back. Correct, so, correct. yeah, no, I, li- I like that. I like that a lot. I mean, it's not too dissimilar to mine, which we'll get to in a minute. But that, that yeah. benching dilemma, it was part of the reason when I picked my team, I was looking at this week and I was like, because it, it would be to bench Gordon. Yeah. And it's like, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> I know that the, the, the logic is not there, but that's, that's it's, you know, it's a difficult one to do. But it does make sense. I suppose, you know, if you've got Gordon, he's got, and I, we don't like to play by EO, but if someone's got a really good rank, maybe it's just safer just to play Gordon, just to, you know, what's the like downside protection or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Son is the downside protection, I feel. Like, he could go big in any game and he is well-owned. So I feel like if you wanted to play the odds, a lot fewer people will own Gordon and a lot will also bench him. So it is the safer move but then if you're chasing, you want to do it. You want to take it on. You want to take on Son and, and hope for a Gordon Hall. So I'm a little bit of two minds and I don't have an answer yet. That's interesting. because I So I just assumed that people would play Gordon because he's, not everyone, but because he's done, a, you know, had a lot of points recently. Um, that, but he's got you know. like two returns all season away from home. Yeah. I don't know I if mean, it's a thing. Usually I, with Newcastle, uh, it's a thing. Fr- no, so Fran did, FPL Fran, you did... You did a stream with the other week. Yeah, Yeah. and there was two things that really stood out there. There was the Newcastle away away form, which was, I mean, it was stark. They're very, very good at home and very, like, not very poor away, but not good away from home. But also Chelsea at home um, made me feel a lot better about, you know, Jackson. I mean, Palmer would be a no-brainer. It made me feel better about playing Jackson because their stats actually are really good, good at home. I mean, maybe they were a little bit inflated today because did you see they got the for the Jackson clearance off the line and then Palmer missed. I thought it was quite a difficult chance, even though it was an mm-hmm. open goal. They got about one, just over one. I think it was 1.1 XG they were given. Really? Okay. For those two shots on. Well, that was on sofa score, to be fair. Yeah, okay. Maybe 
better models wouldn't pick that up. But um, yeah, it also made me feel better. You know, if Edison doesn't play, Petrovic is is more than fine. You know, to to right. come to come in if you know again if Edison's only out for the weekend. But it's not the biggest dilemmas we've got this week, is it, perhaps? <laughs> it's not huge. No. It's a benching dilemma, yeah. and we'll obviously get it wrong. I would hate to bench Bruno and he scores because you know it hurts more when it's your team um so i'm i am debating it because the thing with bruno is and there was some injury doubt he'll either play if he can walk he'll he'll play and if he can't mm -hmm. walk he won't even sub on so with bruno it feels safe like you can start him and if he doesn't come on then that solves your benching dilemma uh, but i'm pretty sure bruno will be fine did they say what the injury is because i know his hand he broke his hand didn't he during the fa cup is it semi-final yeah. No, he just said he has a problem or something. I don't know. Okay. So it could just be his hand. <laughs> fin his hand. Fingers crossed. Well, not Bruno's yeah. if he's broke his yeah. hand. <laughs> but yeah. Um, okay. So if we go on to, to my dilemma, which, I mean, to be honest, I thought yours was the more exciting of the two. Um, so People are going to tune off. Oh, no, I should, yeah, I'm really selling this, aren't I? No, I, <laughs> I mean, I've got injuries like you. So yeah. obviously I'm going to do the same with my goalies. So I'm going to play Edison. If Edison was ruled out for the season... You know, I'll downgrade straight away to Ortega. Um, yes, just, but he's yeah. training now, so that's yeah. not going to happen. So, no, so that's fine. I've got Gabriel, obviously happy with that. And then I've got Burn and Cher away at Burnley. So the Newcastle double up. Um, Foden, Fernandez, Palmer and Son. So the same midfield and the same strikers. So Jackson, Isaac and Haaland, captain. Mm. Um, then I've got Richarlison first sub. I mean, I could try and get really clever and play Richarlison over Son. There's part of me that thinks Richarlison might not play against Liverpool. Because he so, was taken off 60th minute. Yeah, that's the only thing that maybe, yeah. So what, what scared me was I saw this morning, I watched Angie's press conference from the day before and he right. was asked if Richarlison would start and he didn't sound like he would. He was like, he, it sounded like he wasn't going to start tonight and then, right. but maybe he could against Liverpool because they've got, you know, games in quick succession, three games in quick succession. Yeah. So when I saw him starting tonight, I thought maybe he won't start against Liverpool, but I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe he just gets 60 minutes, but. Basically, playing with Charleston over Son, I think I'll be being very, very cute there and not in a good way. <laughs> um, cause I, so, I hear you. It's yeah. minutes as well, right? Richarlison 60 versus Son getting a penalty on the 80th minute. It's Liverpool, right? I mean, they are going to give away chances. So Yeah. And and the plan always was when I wild carded, which was well, only a few days ago, was at least this is an easy bench. Like I could be just bench yeah. Richarlison. Um, like you, I've got Maguire to come in if shares benched the only dilemma i've really got then let's just assume edison's fit is i've got some money in the bank so i could do share to ben white the only problem with that is obviously going into 37 when i'm going to bench boost having two free transfers is massive yeah, especially yeah. when we're tripling up on a lot of teams so t you know there's a lot of moves where i'd need to do two like the trippier yeah. move you mentioned and stuff correct um plus i'm losing a doubler because if share does play in 37 I'm basically losing a fixture across the next three. So I think I've just got to be patient and wait and just not have that. And then if I want white in 38 or Saliba, I can do it then. You can do it then. You could do it then. Yeah, but yeah, I am going to be I jealous. Think... I am going to be jealous. And I would like to have Ben White. So <laughs> Gabriel is still better, right? So you have the better defender. I know people in free hit 34 won't like the answer, but I still think Gabriel is the better defender or better potential. You're right. No, you are right. But I want Gabriel to concede. I imagine actually EOs are going to be interesting this week as well, but a lot of wildcarders did go with double Arsenal defence. They did, but I still yeah. think on the balance, EOs not going to be over 100%. No. Uh, because like nobody not on wildcard is still holding double Arsenal defence. That's very true. That's very true. I mean, I guess they've got players like Gusto or... Yeah. Whoever, yeah. So I probably won't do a move. Basically, that was a long way of saying I probably won't do a move, but there's there's something there. Um, I mean, if Cher was ruled out for the season, because obviously the season's only a couple of weeks, then maybe I have to seriously consider it. Correct. Um, Correct. But I'd be sacrificing Trippier, possibly. I'd, actually, I'd need to look at that. Maybe I could bring in White and then still do a hit for Trippier. Next week. Yeah, because I'd have that free, free spot. Slot free. Yeah, but it would just be then where do I get, you know, where do I get that money from? Because obviously I've got lots of enablers like, I mean, Maguire was just pure enabler. I couldn't afford Dallo and I thought Maguire's the same thing. Right, right. Yeah. But yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I think with Bench Boost, a lot of people are looking to save this week. So we'll keep this one short. Uh, you know, if you can, if you're in a position to save, then definitely save. If you have injuries or whatever, then so be it. Yeah. I mean, then you need to make a transfer, but uh, it's a good week to save. It is, yeah. And next week we got the bench boost special. 
yeah, <laughs> yeah we do yeah yeah <laughs> final double of the season but yeah that's that's perfect um all right let's wrap it up um, awesome thanks yeah. very much for joining everybody we had to do this recorded because we wanted to get the sound correct um and hopefully we have achieved oh. that but if we haven't uh don't tell us I, I really hope so. And if if the sound is awful, it's my fault. I apologise, and I will try and fix it for next week. But if the sound was good, um, remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Bye, all. Cheers. Bloody hell.